Hello and welcome back to another video. So we often find ourselves stuck in some random part of the world with hardly a flight point in sight, or in the situation where we've just got off a flight point and need to go to some random part of the world is a little bit annoying to access. In this video, I will go through 10 different items or just things in general that will help you zip around the world as fast and conveniently as possible. This list isn't in any particular order, though I will spoil you that the final item is probably one of my favorites. Now then, actually, speaking of favorites, we're going to start off at number one with Aviana's Feather. This is certainly one of the most just cool items in the game, in my opinion. It's unlocked by completing one of the Garrison Inn missions that's unlocked at level two. Um, so all you need to do is just go to the Sky Reach and then grab an item, kill the final boss, go back to your inn, hand it in, and you'll get this. This is definitely one of the most powerful movement items in the game, though, and it's, of course, very easy to get. Also, the 10-minute cooldown is kind of lovely. It will shoot you up and then just glide you down sort of slowly, though it really does cover quite a large horizontal distance. This can be used in combination with anything else that gets you high up in the air, for an example, say the Falling Flame. This is a fantastic item for many different scenarios. Um, for example, the flight point above Shatrath City can be quite a pain in the arse to get to. I mean, come on, who could be bothered with running through all those mobs and then getting to the elevator, which you'll probably just run off anyway because you're silly. Um, that, that's not fun. How about you just click a button and fly there yourself? Nice and simple. This is ideal for most scenarios, really, that just involve traveling past some sort of vertical obstacle, like a mountain or a valley or something like that. Next, let's move away from items and quickly mention the Mage Tower. So the Mage Tower slash Spirit Lodge building provides up to three portals to Ogre Waygates across Draenor. The level one building gives you one portal, the level two building gives you two portals, and finally, the level three building will give you three portals. Who would have guessed it? Now, to open up these portals, you need to collect Ogre Waystones by just slaughtering any of the Ogre mobs you find strewn across Draenor. Once you have enough stones, all you need to do is find one of the waygates, I'll provide a map for that, and then click on it. Once this is done, you will have a one-way portal from your mage tower slash spirit lodge to that location. It does cost, um, I think it costs waystones to like uh, deactivate them and various things, and it's only a one-way portal. If you want to travel back the ways with it, I think you need to pay additional Ogre Waystones. I haven't tried this since the beta though, because I just didn't have room for this building, as handy as it may be. So this next item is actually something that a lot of you may have but just not realize. It's the Gorgrond Mole Machine. So one of the Garrison campaign um, quest lines actually involves some hijinks in Gorgrond with them um, with Delvar and Hansel Heavy Hands. I've got no idea what the Horde equivalent is, but I've got to imagine that similar functionality will be rewarded from one of their quest lines. Anyway, um, after you do this quest line as an Alliance player, you'll find a clickable mole machine outside your garrison. Now, it doesn't seem to tell you that this mole machine does anything, but if you click on it, it will take you directly to your Gorground outpost um, instantly as well. It's, it's extremely quick. Very good if you need to go and do that uh, mob grind in the pit or something like that. Next, we've got the Spirit of Shinri, and this essentially just um, summons an extremely fast spectral tile book that lasts for 20 seconds. It drops from a rare mob called Shinri, who is found roaming the southern parts of Shadow Moon Valley. This mount is temporary, but absurdly quick, so it's definitely quite nice. Now, it may seem like this is only an alliance thing, but I actually think it might be very useful for the Horde as well, as there are a few level 100 areas in Shadow Moon Valley that you will be going to as a part of your garrison daily quests. So next, I'm just going to cover three things from the Gnomish Gearworks slash Goblin Workshop. And the first thing is the Chopper. This is pretty nice, and it's actually quite similar to Shinri, just that it has a 30 second cooldown. However, it does um, have a limited number of charges. Now, you've got the potential of having this appear if you have the level 2 version of the Workshop slash Gearworks. Next, we've got the Rocket. This again comes from the Gearworks slash Workshop, and it is only available at level 2. Unfortunately, though, you only get two charges, but that's easily enough to get past any annoying terrain. Just any, basically any time where you need to go over something, then just use your rocket. Very handy for things like, say, Socrathar's Rise, if you manage to somehow fall off the side, getting back up to Shatrath, or just traversing some of those gorges that are located in um, Nagrand. This can be a very, very useful item to have. And then the final item that you can get from the Gearworks slash Workshop is the Sky Terror Personal Delivery System. This thing is pretty awesome. It's actually a little bit like the Aviana's Feather item. It will shoot you right up in the air and basically just apply a goblin glider. You get this from the level 1 gearwork slash workshop, though, which can be pretty useful. And yeah, it's like just got limited charges, sends you quite a 
quite a large horizontal distance, so it's very useful in many different scenarios. Next, we've got an old favourite, it's the Goblin Glider. This is now craftable by engineers and warlords of Draenor, but the main difference is that it stacks up to 20 and it can be sold on the auction house. Um, so that's actually really kind of cool, though using these constantly may rack up a decently hefty bill. However, the item isn't that expensive and it can, of course, help you get around the place and then also prevent falling damage. You can combine this with the falling flame item excellently also. And um, it is, of course, just great for getting somewhere quickly if you need, um, you know, if you need to do that and you're high up. So, for an example, if you're at the Shatrath City flight point and need to go to the garrison, um, you know, like the solo daily area thingy, which is over at the coast, then you can just jump off the cliff, use your glider, and you'll be grand. Next, you can get a 20% speed increase, or mounted speed increase, from the level 3 stables. And there really isn't a great deal to say about this one, you just build a stables, upgrade it, and, uh, you know, just do your um, daily quest thingies every day for it, and you should be fine. Finally, it's time to talk about my favourite item, which is the Falling Flame. It's completely bloody insane, and it can be combined with many other things to just be extremely powerful. Now, what it does is it shoots you off on a massive, uh, at a massive uh, distance extremely quickly, but there is a catch. You'll die if you hit the ground, which is a little bit unfortunate, but the good news is that the various slow fall items in the game will mitigate this, as will, say, a paladin's bubble and a hunter's disengage. It can also be combined with Aviana's feather, or the goblin glider, to travel extreme distances at fast speed. Basically, when you get to the apex of, the, you know, the, the curve that this thing will send you on, you can then use Aviana's Feather to get up even higher. It's, it's crazy, and in a world where no flying is a thing, it's very, very handy. Now, you can get this item on the Timeless Isle by killing Cinderfall. The only problem is that it's not a particularly high drop rate, and it's got 50 charges. Still, though, 50 charges with a one-hour cooldown does the job quite well, and it will last you. I found that it was very handy from just getting from quest hub to quest hub because that's basically how far it throws you, so that's nice. Now, it's also particularly good for me as I am a hunter, mainly anyway, and can't save myself with disengage. If your class can't do this, then there is an item called the Breath of Talador that drops from a rare mob called Glimmerwing, and this just does the same effect as disengage, however, it only works on Talador. That while that isn't much, it can still be handy while leveling up in Talador and doing some of the level 100 content in the zone. Anyway, that's it for the video. They are the ways that I'm aware of for getting around Draenor a bit faster. If there's anything that you know about that I haven't covered in this video, then be sure to let people know in the comments. I'm sure you'll get loads of friendly upvotes and various things like that. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you found it useful, and I will see you next time.